Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Garipa Fartur, and I am security researcher in Positive Technologies Company. And today I'm going to show you and make some presentation about drone hijacking and playing with some IoT stuff. Well, as I said, I'm working in Positive Technologies Company, and we make some solutions and research in different fields and areas of security. It also apply, uh, applies to wireless and telecom security. So, and nowadays we're starting to play with some of your stuff, so I'm involved in this. And today I'm going to tell you about drone hijacking. Uh, wireless devices are widely used nowadays. They are surrounded us. Well, you can see them. They're in, in, uh, they're, you can see them any day in all daily life. Wireless keyboards, wireless uh, remote controls, different stuffs, toys, uh, key, as I said, keyboards. So, uh, my presentation is about SDR particularly. I think that some of you are familiar with SDRs, but some of them I think not, so I had to explain and tell you a few words about what is this SDR. SDR, it is software defined radio, as it's written. It's very useful and unique devices. It allows you to make a lot of interesting and very cool stuff. I, more information you can easily find on a, any wiki, but just imagine yourself. You want to sniff and hijack uh, some devices, some remote control, some planes, make GPS spoofing, and all, uh, in all these cases, you need only one device, one SDR, not a scope of uh, some Mm, transmitters and responders, just one SDR in, and of course software. So let's talk about some SDR market. Very, nowadays it's really huge market of SDRs. There are many, many of them. Uh, some of them well known, for example, Hacker One. I'm sure that people who knows about SDR knows about Hacker of One too. But not so many people know about Hacker of Blue. It's some kind of clone. Uh, it was on a Kickstarter project. Nowadays, you can find clone of HackerF on some Chinese sites, and it will cost, mm, and it it cost will low. It's about two hundred dollars. BladeRF, nice devices. You can run some solutions from Yati, BTS, and some LTE projects on it. Nice device. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Yes, it's it is user P, not Blader, not HackerF. It is USRP. Uh, USRP is National Instruments Solutions. It's a really huge amount of devices, very, very de interesting devices. They appear as nowadays, new one. Re it's a very cool stuff. And here one of them, it's USRP B200. Well, mm, cool stuff, but not so cheap one. Interix, it's solutions from some, uh, some Russian guys. Not bad device. It's uh, this device. It's some uh, situated in some middle between Blade RF and user P. It have got same tuner as in the Blade RF and have got nice FPGA and amplifiers, which allows you to run <coughs> BTS with very big coverage from the box. So in some simple you uh, in some simple SDRs. You had to make your own amplifiers and some filters. And in this device, all in one. Nice device. Well, Airtel is there. It's a huge family of devices, too. They bring new life. Then uh, some guys from the Osmacom uh, un understand that it's not just a simple DVBT receiver, but this receiver can allows you to sniff huge a uh, huge range of frequencies. You can sniff uh, GSM, uh, DSC, uh, and uh, even some uh, satellite signals with just simple cheap device which cost about $10. Nice device. If you want to start to play with SDRs and you have no, national, and you have no money, just try to play with them. Lime SDR, well, uh, this device appears, I think, about half of a year ago. It was a crowdfunding company. It's really nice device. There are 
many solutions nowadays which allows you to make to play with different stuffs with different um, software nice device very small very convenient very useful highly recommended this and there is another one device uh, by the way Lime ZR uh, produced new chipset and uh, Lime Micro and this is uh, chipset is set it in new Lime SDRs. The same chipset you can find on X3X. It's from Firewaves. Pretty small, very nice device. Just imagine yourself, you can make your SDR sniffer and hide it in any device, even in a laptop. This device have got form factor of the Wi-Fi model. You can easily use it anywhere. And by the way, mini PCI interface allows you to sniff very huge range of frequencies at and get a really big bandwidth bandwidth well i talk i tell you a few words about devices and let's talk about software for sdrs uh, i usually split these devices uh, this software on a uh, three main areas it is sdr sharp uh, gqrx this is uh, solutions for how to say, for simple analyzing, you can see just uh, what happens in radio air, radio uh, by online, you can see waterfall, make some simple demodulation, uh, just listen radio, FM, IM, and it's pretty simple. GNU Radio and Love Youth, it's another one kind of uh, software solutions. These solutions allows you to make anything absolutely it's <laughs> anything in radio it's very flexible uh, constructors with very huge functionality highly recommended to play with them honestly i usually play with no radio because it's open source it's it's very good constructor and uh, i have no in, enough knowledge in signal in digital signal processing but this uh, software GNU Radio allows me to play with SDRs and make some research and analysis. And Bordline, this software is very simple but very powerful in right hands. This, uh, oh, <laughs> excuse me, uh, Bordline, it's a, uh, well, uh, Bordline uh, allows you to make any kind of analysis, but you had to have. Uh, you had to have no much more about digital processing analyzing. You must be familiar with mathematics, the huge amount of mathematics inside of this, but it allows you to do a lot. Well, let's, uh, let's talk about what SDR allows you to do. There is a simple list of, of some, uh, some things that you can play with NRF, you can, SDR. You can play with radio just with single with this simple block block scheme diagram you can make your own radio fm station you can make some replay attacks for example in this case in this diagram uh, presented hacking of the ring bell just simple replay attack nothing nothing more some uh, some flow graphs much more difficult and complicated so example, for example, it is a GSM sniffing, which allows you to make a multiplexer and make an analyzing of many channels in a one scope, in a one flow graph. But you had to have a really good computer to compute this online. Uh, well, in my research, I make this scheme. It's pretty simple. It allows me to analyze uh, some devices with GFSK mod modulation. I will talk about it later about it a bit later. I will explain what is this and what is this means. RFID and F in FC. Imagine with radio you can play and with SDR you can play with such kind of devices like uh, in FC. You can make a plain, plain tracking. It's pretty simple, pretty easy. As I said previously, you can make GPS spoofing. There are some projects with UHD and some of them for, for HackerF. Well, you can make some user targeting. You can analyze who around uh, around you, who's who is, what which devices is used, 
Uh, you can make IMSI catchers. If you're familiar with telecom, you, I think, know that is mean, what does it mean. You can make a Bluetooth low energy sniffer. You can sniff some IoT devices and etc. There are some projects of this. And of course, I think the most interesting for some people, it is BTS. Base stations can be easily run on the SDR, SDRs. There are many projects such as Asmacom BTS, Open BTS, Yati BTS, uh, Open LTE. You can run your own open. Uh, you can run your own LTE base station with using of SDR and software. Uh, and with the software, it will be cost you just the price of the computer and SDR. And just imagine you have got an LTE base station. Well, let's talk about. Uh, let's look about close. Um, about our target. Our target is NRF24 chipset. NRF24 is Nordic Semiconductor chipset, it's proprietary, very cheap, widely used. It can be found in a lot of devices such as remote controls, uh, mouses, keyboards, uh, drones, and etc. It's very widely used, it gives you a very good high speed for uh, 2 megabit per samples and it works on the frequency 2.4 gigahertz gigahertz it's uh, open it's open frequency so this is device is very good i'm working with this device through this library it is you can see this lib um, you can by the link below by the link on the bottom of the slide you can use this api well, I use uh, some kind of chipset that works through the SPI interface. And you can directly work with SPI and write to registers of the device. But it's more comfortable to use API. And I use this API. By the way, there are a lot of analogs of the, this device, of the NRF chipset. For example, in some drones, in some quadrocopters, I find BK2423 analog. Some it's this chipset have got some additional functionality, but usually it's pretty same. Well, let's do closer. Let's look closer to packet of the NRF24. There are usually two kind of packets. One packet is co common packet. It consists of preamble, address, payload, and CRC. CRC it's uh, not necessary field. It's additional field. Sometimes it. It knows it not use it. Address can be from three to five bytes. Well, there are another. There is another packet format. It called shock burst. But uh, take. Let's talk about first one, common packet. I find this using of this packet in a different kind of devices. Well, an RF chipset allows you not only to transmit that data but receive data too. It is very interesting that to sniff uh, data, you had to put address of the, to the target chipset to sniff area with this address. And if you want to make a sniffer on a device, we had to brute force three bytes of address. It's about uh, 16 million combinations. It's too much. But there is some trick. Uh, if you can, if you read data sheet, there is some legal instruction. Uh, you can see this; uh, it, it is marked. This illegal instruction allows you to use two bytes uh, of the address space. Two bytes address space for sniffing all two bytes. We had to brute force 65,000 combinations. And it's already not so much, and we can. Make a fuzzing, make a sniffer for a few minutes, and we can sniff all devices. But there is one very interesting trick. The, there is a preamble in this beginning of the packet, and it is interesting that chipset not look uh, doesn't look at the preamble at all. Chipset only looking for address. If chipset uh, is tuned to receiving a data from the air. Uh, and it's find uh, correct address in the air in the air packets. 
it decided to receive these packets and it decided that this packet was uh, to this chipset, send it to this chipset. So uh, we make a trick. At first, we make ability to work with, with this illegal instruction. You should make minor changes in API of this lab library to write, to, to write in a register uh, this data to make the chipset works with the two-byte address. And after that, we put in the address just uh, data from the preamble. So we start to sniff all packets with GFSK modulation, uh, which can be found with a preamble. So uh, there is a sniffer. I'd like to show you on a practice how it does look like. A few seconds. Uh, here is a, just a Raspberry Pi with uh, some chipset inside. It's uh, NRF24 chipset. As I said, it works through the SPI interface. Well, pretty simple. I connect it from laptop to this device. And there is some script inside that should... Mm. Let's... Here we are. It is my Raspberry Pi with chipset and let's start our scanner. Well, it's run and let's look a bit closer. Uh, let's find this remote control. Honestly, as a, uh, you can read from data sheet that there are a lot of channels that can be tuned for uh, this NRF module, but I already tuned for a correct frequency for a correct channel. Channel 9 uses in SEMA remote controls as a channel for synchronization. So I turn on it and you see data starts goes. Mm -hmm. AFAE, -A this is uh, data from the remote control. The uh, this one. Uh, this is this this data. So uh, you can see how tuned my chipset for sniffing. You see that as a receiving address, I put data zero zero AA. Zero zero AA. It is preamble. Preamble. So. A bit later, I will exp explain why I use 00AA. Well, this is pretty simple scanner. Uh, main idea of this scanner is to go through the channels and find some data. So we can play with some devices. Um, there, is, there can be some mouses, some um, remote controls, or keyboards, and after some, we just goes through the channels and after that we can see that our, um, our scanner <coughs> find devices on a channel 9 with this address on a channel 3a on a this address with this address and after that we can tune our chipset exactly to the device so we can analyze exactly this device that we are going to sniff So that is pretty simple, and uh, but I'm not the first one who guessed about this trick with the uh, two-byte address and preamble. Travis Goodspeed is very cool researcher. Make this uh, research much more earlier. Well, unfortunately, I find his research. Uh, I think about half of a year. Only then I bought a face dancer. I find this uh, source code, you can see godfeed.nrf. This um, uh, Travis make his own solution, make his own API to work with these chipsets through the SPI interface. He even make his own board for hacking of these devices. He make a very good work for this. Uh, so let's talk about what about uh, Gaussian frequency shift keying modulation. This is modulation, you can read about more about it 
in a wiki. It's uh, used in a, a lot of devices and a lot of chipsets. Well, uh, we can see how it goes on uh, in the radio air. Um, here on this picture, we can see data on a channel 24. Um, a few seconds. I can show you. It's on a real life. I think. For this, we just all we need is start GQRX. Mm -hmm. Oh, something terrible in the air, honestly. Very lot of data goes for. <laughs> so I think that we couldn't see remote control. But maybe we have luck. Mm -hmm. I already know in the channels in which frequencies works these solutions, so we can, I think we can find it. As I said previously, on the channel 9, you can see on the middle, yes, a uh, few seconds. I think that this is, this is, uh, no, 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 not this, definitely. No, we couldn't see. Oops. Yeah, we can see. Uh, you can see the spikes sometimes appears here. For example, this. This is our transmitter. Uh, you can see that sometimes it's higher, goes higher, it, our transmitting data. But there are a lot of uh, some devices in the air. It's not Wi-Fi, it's some kind of another transceiver. So, uh, I hope that it's, that we will, <laughs> that we will see this kind of picture, but unfortunately there are a lot of devices here. Well, what about GFSK modulation? Uh, to m make a bit more understanding, we should uh, make this GNU radio scheme and make analyzing of the data what we received. After the, after the analyzing through the board line, we will receive such picture. Mm, I'm not sure clearly it's seen. You can see the pike on the picture below, it is starting of the transmitting. You see this part? It is starting of the transmitting. It's our chipset start to works. After that, it's tuned to a frequency. This is uh, this surface. It is uh, then our transceiver uh, tuned to a frequency. After that, you can see jigsaw. This part is uh, zero and O's. It is pre preamble of the packet. After that, we can see address, payload, and at the end, CRC. Well, and another pike, it is the end of the transmission. This data, uh, our transmitter turned off. It is uh, lo maybe lost connection or just, uh, just turned off for a while. So, in the in the bottom picture, you can see these explanations of this data. It is consists of zero and ones. Uh, you, this part, it is a lot of a lot of ones. It is this part of the packet, and the end. This, this is CRC of the packet. You can make analyzing of the received data data by your own, by your hands, not automatically. So. With these knowledges, we can make simple scheme for analyzing on a GNU radio. We make a demodulation of the received data and put this data to a FIFO channel, just in a simple FIFO file, uh, and our scheme puts zero and ones to this channel. And with the simple program, we read zero and ones and combine it in a full packets, in the complete packets that you can see in 
in, in the bottom of the part. So I can show you it, how it works. There is this scheme. Well, we are starting that scheme. It writes the data to a FIFO file, and here we start our GFSK finder. Few seconds. And here we see some data which can be found on the air. Let's uh, let's turn on our remote control. Mm, uh, no, this this block scheme configured to sniff data from the mouse. You see, this is mouse. This is data from Microsoft mouse. First, <laughs> first five bytes, A9, and etc. till the 44. It is address. After that goes payload. Payload till uh, 63. After that goes CRC. CRC of the NRF chipset and 63 it is uh, CRC inside the payload. It is additional part which is made by Microsoft uh, firmware of the mouse. So scheme is pretty simple. You can easily configure it to, to sniff to sniff a remote control. I know that remote control work on another one uh, board rate, so, uh, and works on another channel. We know that it is channel nine, so let's turn to channel nine. Yeah. You see that there are a lot of data in this channel, but we can find our remote control. This is synchronization data of our remote control. Uh, after synchronization, after we receive synchronization, this remote control start to re uh, send data on other channels with hopping. I will show you a bit later that. Well, this is what not so cheap scanner. Why it's not so cheap? Because it using SDR. SDR it's not one dollar device. It cost about from 200s, but it depends, of course, on the, of the device. On a page day six, we may contest uh, with a task to hijack and hi uh, to hijack a drone, and we got a winner. One guy can solve this solution, solve solve this task and task, and he can stall our drone. For this, by the link on the bottom of the slide, you can find description of this contest. For this contest, we make uh, two kind of devices. One of them works on the Arduino, and another one, remote control, works on the Raspberry Pi. You can easily make your own uh, universal remote control with these solutions. Well, and this, our diagram, our block scheme, once more, you can see here explanation of the data on the top. You can see the picture from the board line with explanation of the received data. Zero once it's a preambular. Before preambular, we can see that it's uh, the, that our device start to transmit. It's tuned to a frequency. After that, from A2, it is already address of the device. And after that, it goes payload. So you can read about these solutions by the link. Well. A few months ago, I decided to refresh some knowledge about these solutions and find interesting open source project. It's called Deviation TX. This project allows you to make a universal, uh, universal remote control from just uh, an NRF chipset and any other 
remote control, you have just make uh, some firm firmware for this. It is pretty simple. You can use these solutions to make your own remote control on a SDR2. It is not so difficult. So let's show you some drone hijacking. As I said previously, we can find we know procedure of the set upping and uh, in, in configuring of the remote control. There are two steps before uh, remote control start to work with the drone. First, it, it sends a data on a channel 9 with information in which channel and in with which, with which uh, address this drone should work. So, and after that, there is a synchronization. So, that's all. It is synch synchronized. And it is start to listen my device. But we know uh, algorithm of the synchronization and there are some lags of, uh, uh, in the protocol, some mis misfits. And these misfits allow, allows us to understand in which uh, channels and with which addresses works uh, this device. So let's again start our scanner. Few seconds, please. Oh. <coughs> so we start our scanner, and we are starting to go through the channels. And on the channel 10, we can see data from remote control to uh, to a drone to this quadrocopter. So this part is address of the device. And some guys already reversed all remotes for CMOS and we can make our own remote control. We put in just address of the device we, in which was it synchronized it shows us in which channels it works and you can see that this remote control still works but as I said we have our own remote control oops I turned it off and so original remote control wouldn't work thank you <laughs> Uh, original remote control still works and drones still receive data from this remote control but we overload channel and put, uh, send much more data that is why our remote control is have a bigger prior priority more per have got a bigger priority priority so this is not working and this is working <laughs> So now let's turn it off. And don't forget that this with uh, previous project, as I showed before, Deviation TX, you can make a lot of remote controls. There are a lot of description. For example, uh, after I make solution for SEMA, uh, my colleague gave me another one uh, drone. It called Skywalker, I think, and it takes. I think about 10 minutes to make solution for this drone too because it works on the same chipset but there was inverse if I, I'm not mistaken there was inverse throttle stick but everything other was absolutely the same so a um, few seconds by the way we can uh, look for a data of a, uh, of a remote control Uh, this is data, a few seconds. 
uh, let's turn our scanner to s look for this address, this address of the device. Yes. This is a data of the uh, few seconds. I think here. This is a packet. Mm. Sometimes it's. I'm not a good programmer, so my program sometimes fails <laughs> too often. Um, one, one more time. Okay, and here we can analyze data. This is moving of the sticks. You can see first part. Yes, and this throttle router and etc. Well, so I saw the contest here that you can win the prize with SEMA. So. If somebody wants to win this prize, please call me. I can teach you how you can win. This. Yes, definitely. So let's talk about mouse jack attack. Uh, researchers from Bastille Network uh, a year ago make a white pap paper about mouse jack attack. This attack consists of three different cases. First two are pretty similar and not so interesting. And the third one, it is very, very interesting. Just imagine yourself. Uh, if you don't remember, I can repeat that. Uh, if you send to a mouse packet from the keyboard, this, uh, this dongle allows you to uh, receive packets from the keyboard and make a press of the keyboard. So you can send unencrypted packet as it was crafted for a mouse as it was crafted for a keyboard, but send it to the address of the mouse and don't go receive this packet and uh, put it to the USB part and there, there will be a pressing of the key. There was no... Um, people asked for POC. They saw that... They saw just white paper without any... Uh, proof of concept. So I decided to make this proof of concept for myself and it takes not so much time. As a target, as I said, I use a mouse, mouse keyboard and mouses, mouse. And uh, let's look what we, what we have. Uh, as, I, as I said in previous, previously, mouse accepted keyboard packets and these packets are not encrypted. So, A <laughs> few seconds. Let's run our, our GFSK analyzer once more. Hmm. Oh, I forgot. I change configuration. Few seconds. We should change bitrate to a mouse bitrate. Let's start. Let's start. Here, there is data uh, from the mouse. So, uh, as I said previously, this is ad address of the mouse. And from 44 starts payload with CRC. So uh, you can see that we make the simple script. This script sends da uh, send data to this address, to address of the mouse, first four bytes. It is encrypted because, uh, well, to prove that it's not encrypted, I will show you something. You see that 
we can see the speed of the mouse and direction of it, it moves. Uh, it works not all this time because uh, mouse have got many channels in which he will, it works. Well, here we see this I move and we can see the speed with directions of our moves. It is very simple packet. You can see this. Uh, 7F and FF, it's direction and speed of the mouse movement. So we make the same script with, with the same packet and try to fuzz, make some simple fuzzing of the data inside this payload. So uh, it was not this script. Well, it is pressing of F1 um, of F1K. It is make some fuzzing, uh, try to guess of the number of the packet and all this send, uh, send uh, pressing of the F, uh, F1K. So, yeah, we got, we're opening a terminal. Uh, we send from the Raspberry Pi packets to a mouse dongle, to a mouse address, and we received F1 uh, packet. So that was, thank you. Uh, while, uh, while we make a fuzzing, we can find that we send 1D packet, but then we make a UHB hid uh, information of the scan codes of the, of the key presses. 1D, it is not FID, F1, but F1, it is 3A. It is because data in the, pale, uh, in the packet are, is shifted on a one bit. So that w it is uh, our pressing of F1. You can, understand, you can imagine yourself that we can send any data to a target. I if our victim have got some kind of this dongle, some USB Microsoft, uh, we can not only sniff data and sometimes decrypt it, but we can put data, we can uh, send um, some script with get, for example, with some uh, some malicious some virus to visit it, some viruses sites and etc. Uh, and what about other devices with Gaussian frequency shift keying modulation? This very lot of devices with GFSK modulation, as I said. Uh, it is Bluetooth Low Energy, TZ Wave, ZigBee, CC2500, all these devices use GFSK modulation. And for analyzing of these devices, for sniffing of these devices, all you need is just a GNU radio and this one block from GNU radio, it's called Coder 2 Demodulator. All magic do was done by, by this block. You can make simple analyzing of wireless, uh, what goes uh, around you. You can analyze radio air interface through just one simple this, just one simple block. Uh, more information and more some interesting stuff we plays with Z-Wave and Zigbee you can find on, by the link on the bottom of the slide. There are many interesting things these dudes do with these devices. And why are we talking about GFSK? Uh, GFSK and Z-Wave, Zigbee and others are widely used, and they used in some smart kits, smart home kits, IoT kits. So you cannot hide, you cannot hide your device. Just imagine how many devices nowadays uh, in, are involved in all this process. Maybe you heard about that half of, about half of a year ago. Uh, some research find uh, make a security issues in a light bulb from Philips. Well, uh, and there are a lot of such bulbs, light bulb. And not only this, not only Philips, there are a lot of, a lot of devices from IoT, smart heats that can be hacked by these devices, by GNU radio. You, you cannot, not only you will rule, 
in your house, but some other guys will do. So, what is the main point of all this presentation? You should understand that you must be ahead, uh, one step before the criminals. You make, uh, you should have, you should make analyze, make an audit of the devices of smart kids before you implement, before you s start to s start to sell them. Uh, so let's not make mistake. Let make audit. Let make this world a bit more secure. Well, together, I think. So, thank you for your time. Thank you. Well, maybe some, somebody has got questions. I would be glad to answer you, if I can. No? So... <laughs> I will teach you. <laughs> so, if you have got any questions, you can ask me a bit later. Maybe some show and Microsoft keyboard decrypting. I can show you it. It is pretty simple. So thank you. Thank you for your time.